So right now we have 300 random facts for you. I found them on facts.net. Now I have only seen about f the first five because I just wanted to kind of get a gist of what they were. You could find this uh, on Google. I literally just typed in random facts, okay? And um, I clicked the one that seemed the best to do. This one I believe it said a 300 random facts that um, people don't know what to do with or something along those lines. <laughs> So, for fact number one, let's get right into it. We have, let's go. <clears throat> All right, sorry for clearing my throat. So, for the first one, we have rubber bands will last much longer when they're refrigerated. Now, when I can't, uh, okay. First off, when a rubber band is placed in the fridge, it causes the polymers, polymers to relax, is what it says. This keeps the band from breaking down as fast as it normally does. Now, <clears throat> that is very interesting. I don't really understand what polymers is but it sounds about right <laughs> this is very interesting i don't know whoever refrigerated a rubber band to know this but probably it had probably something to do with they were rubber banding some food in a bag together and they discovered this that's kind of funny there are 293 ways to make a change for a dollar um <laughs> this includes change in dimes quarters and combinations of the two can you figure out all 293 combinations i don't think i well, okay. I work, have worked, and ha currently do work food, and I'm not really sure how you would do that because in my mind, there's probably like three or four ways, but if you know all 293 ways, I would love to hear how uh, that is possible. All right, so the Grand Theft Auto franchise has lawsuits that total over $1 billion. Now, I don't even have to read the description of that before I can already assume why. On a couple of them, I'm going to just go ahead and assume some have possibly to do with the music they use, I'm assuming. I don't know. But let's see what it goes into. There are a lot of controversies that surround the game due to the nature of its gameplay. Rockstar North has faced many legal claims of copyright and influencing young players to commit sexual and illegal acts. All right. <laughs> I actually do, I think I might do a, a video about that, actually, about, um, I actually did a paper about video games and, uh, if they're violent or not. I had to do a paper that, uh, for college, and it was basically, do they make you violent? But I also had to counteract, uh, both arguments as if they don't and if they do. I actually see both sides of that, and it's kind of a really long conversation, because when I did that paper... It really did uh, give me, I genuinely wrote for both sides. Like I had two, two genuine opinions on both sides. So I definitely should do a podcast on that. I think I might even do it today. Um, anyways, uh, so all clocks in Pulp Fiction are set at 420. And I, don't, <laughs> I love Pulp Fiction. It's one of my dad's favorite movies. Um, I think that if you're a millennial, you've probably seen it a thousand times. <laughs> if you have not seen it, uh, it kind of goes along with the territory. I would say why they, like, you know, the creator would want to do that. But, uh, some people that state that there are two scenes where the clocks are not set to this. So watch the movie to figure out which scenes they were. So this is not a fact then. And I'm glad that they actually listed that as, well, maybe there's not truth to it. But, um, that's interesting that there are, t there are two clocks not set to that. So I would like to see... Which, uh, how many were actually said to it? I guess they, I would be curious about that. So the next one is the eye of an ostrich is bigger than its brain. I feel like I've heard this before. Um, I feel like there's a lot of interesting facts about ostriches uh, to begin with. But um, it's the eyes. Oh, so its eyes are, are, sorry, I apologize. Its eyes are around the size of a billboard ball. One eye is also smaller than the other. Perhaps this is why they tend to run in circles. Is that perhaps why they tend to run in circles? Is that why they run in circles? See? I actually enjoy when people write in that style because it makes me go, hmm, kind of have to go look down and, like, look that up later because uh, that's interesting. <laughs> so a dime has 118 ridges on its edge. I'm assuming those are those little lines on the side. So the ridges allow the coin to determine if, if it is real or fake. This was implanted on all coins before the 18th century. The ridges also make it harder to make counterfeit coins. Now, that makes sense. I, honestly, I have never even considered that someone could make a fake dime or anything like that because I always assumed they would just go for the bigger bills, but that's interesting. And I would love to see what a fake one looks like, actually, because I've seen the fake up to 20, 50, and 100, but I've never seen that, so that's funny. I'd have to... If anyone ever seen that, I'd be curious to see what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so on average, a secretary will use its left hand for 56% of what they type on a keyboard. 
So you're using your left hand more on a keyboard than your right hand. Okay, that's interesting. This is because most of the of uh, the letters in the English language are on the left side of the keyboard. The right side of the keyboard only contains a, I and N as the most common letters. That is pretty interesting. I would say I would never even consider that. I would just think you're doing even on both sides. But looking at my keyboard in front of me right now, that does seem it does seem like that because if you look at the right side, there's a little bit more of symbols. So that makes sense. The largest part, pair of uh, sorry, I apologize. The largest pair of eyes in the world belongs to the giant squid. Uh, its eyes are the size of soccer balls and are at least 25 centimeters across. The largest eye is only around 9 centimeters wide, which belongs to the swordfish. <clears throat> that is pretty, pretty interesting. I mean, I would imagine that would be something like that, but uh, I'd be curious to see all the animals in the ocean that are, like, above whale size, what, how big their eyes are, because, I mean, just think of how big a, a whale eye might look. I mean, I don't know. To be honest, I have a whale phobia, so I don't know. I haven't looked long enough, but do they have big eyes or not? It doesn't seem like they do, so... It's pretty interesting about the squid. I I personally cannot look too long at underwater animals. It, it very freaks me out. But, like, if you can look and tell me how big that is, I'd be really curious. <laughs> uh, the Pokemon Rhydon was the first ever to be created. Uh, I have not heard this, and as a Pokemon fan, this is really, really cool. I um, love the games. I love the show. I obviously probably don't know as many facts as other people do because I would have probably known this. <laughs> Uh, so according to the lead game designer, Ken, um, I don't want to say his last name because I don't want to butcher it, but a Rhydon was the first ever Pokemon to be uh, created by the team. And no, it was not Bulbasaur. So people thought it was Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. That's interesting. I always just, uh, like everybody else, imagined it was Pikachu. <laughs> but um, I don't even know if I really gave it consideration at the end of the day either, though, to be honest. I think I just watched. I was really little when the show came out. So I think my brain just all automatically all the time never assumed like anything about who was the first i just assumed that they just showed it to us in the right order <laughs> or something like that the super mario land was the most popular game on the game boy during its release it is also the first platform where mario games had released uh to this day super mario land continues to be one of the largest ranked games loved by retro gamers it's also the first platform oh okay so like if there were super mario games there were they it is interesting because I was thinking, like, obviously you would have the, the Super Nintendo or the regular Nintendo from the beginning. So, w it was Mario released, like, on an arcade style before that? Because I'm just curious. That's interesting. Like, I, I feel like the Game Boy was later, but if somebody knows, let me know. The dot over the small letter I is called a tittle. It has a name. Interesting. You know, you would never think that it actually had a name. You would be like, oh, it's just part of the letter because... Like, I mean, what parts of letters are, like, broken down like that? That's pretty interesting. This dot, and I actually always don't dot mine. Mine's a heart. So I just call mine, I'm going to call mine a heartle. <laughs> this dot is an integral part of the lowercase i and j. So j also has this. So the dots are also appear over the letters in various languages. Uh, these dots, sorry. So that's very interesting. Um, you learn something new every day. You know, they. I don't know if they ever taught that in school, but maybe they did. I don't know. I didn't pay much attention in school, so we'll thought, you know, someone else might know. Uh, so Japan has 23 vending machines per person. The ratio is the same per capita. Japan has the highest amount of vending machines in the world. That is interesting. I feel like I've seen some of their vending machines, and I feel like they, they do have vending machines for different things other than, like, where America, we kind of keep it limited what we do in the vending machines, but I, th I think it's really awesome how they do that, because sometimes you want to buy something, but you just don't want to talk to someone that day, and I'm very introverted sometimes, Some I, I have an extroverted personality, but I can be very, very introverted, and I'm very shy too, so sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to talk to someone today, and so that's really convenient, I really like that, I think we should get on board with that over here, because that's really cool. Uh, soccer balls were once used for playing basketball. The first basketballs were not produced until 19... Oh, I apologize. 1894. This means that for three years upon the invention of the game, people were using non-regulated balls. To be clear, I did mess that up. It is 1894. So the first back basketballs were not produced until 1894. Just wanted to rephrase that. So this means that for the three years upon the invention of the game, people were using non-regulated balls. I would love to see what they looked like. I would just love to see it. Like, so it's just like... You just had a random, like, like would you have, like, a like a beach ball sometimes? like So that's interesting because the game would be different by the weight of the ball. So that's 
that's fun like just to look back on that i wish that you know that's when you really wish they had like video you know you could see that it'd be really really cool to watch because i just feel like like what decide what was the deciding factor on the weight of the ball like let's let's go with this ball when they decided like was it most fun with the soccer ball weight whatever ball they were using that was soccer ball weight that like what made that that weight the deciding factor to make the ball that way you know why <laughs> i'd be curious if it was like less fun to play with a lighter ball and obviously probably a heavier ball would be even worse so i would love to know what's the, what the average ball they were using was like before that and uh so candles flame is hot and uh blue in zero gravity so diffusion feeds the flame with oxygen this then allows carbon dioxide to move away from the point of combustion i feel like a lot of people knew this even as children but if you didn't, that's a really interesting fact. And it's really, uh, fire itself is just kind of interesting how it works. So, uh, that's a really fun fact. So putting sugar on a cut will make it heal faster. I've never heard this. I do know the thing from working food about mustard when you get a burn, but I did not know putting sugar on a cut will make it heal faster. So that's good. Cause I, uh, you know, I'm always nicking, cutting myself all the time working in a kitchen so pour some sugar on top of the wound and wrap it with a bandage the granules of sugar crystals will absorb any moisture the bacteria thrive on how's that for some sweet treats so i'd always say that that is really interesting always make sure you look at stuff when you're putting it on your body though uh you know if you are putting sugar like that even sugar i would just still say do your research uh before you do that and because some people do have sensitive skin things like that i don't see what wrong be wrong with sugar but i'm just playing a disclaimer because i don't want to put the wrong things out there but i am reading this off a website so i'm assuming it's safe to some degree <laughs> hopefully i mean i mean i don't know but uh x-rays can't detect real diamonds uh the reason for this is because x-ray cannot penetrate or identify the materials in the diamond so if you put an x-ray in a diamond i'm assuming do you see the outline of it or it just does not show up at all that's cool there are seven different types of twins Apart from the well-known identical and fraternal types of twins, there are five more. These include half-identical, mirror image, mixed, chromosome, and super fecundation or super fetation. So I don't know if I said those right. I am not the good, at the, like not very good at pronouncing words sometimes. I, I'm going to probably check into that. That is wildly interesting to me. Uh, I did not know that. I think I only knew about three or four of those. So there's seven. So I think I did not know. Okay, I don't know what, uh, yeah, I don't know what mixed is, chromosome, or the last two. So I didn't know what four of them were. I think I'm going to definitely look into that later. That is really, really, really interesting. Um, if you've ever met anyone with a twin like that, uh, outside of those things, I would love to hear about it. That sounds very interesting to me, because the human body can do so many different things it's just like it's just interesting and i feel like that would be such a unique experience this would be interesting to hear about but the national flag of libya was formerly just the color green through the years of 1977 to 2011 its national was a single color there were no other designs added to the flag so it was just a, a one solid colored flag. That's interesting. I don't know what it looks like now, but I'm sure it has a lot more style now because I have never seen a single colored flag. Uh, the plastic tips of shoelaces are called aglets. These tips can also be made of metal. It's a, oh, so I'm so sorry. Its purpose <laughs> is to help make the lace easier to hold when running through the holes of the shoes. Hmm. See, I, th these are things you just feel like you're supposed to know and you just don't. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know. Maybe someone else does. Sign language has tongue twisters. They are called uh, fumblers. Many who have practiced sign language over the years will still fumble over certain sequences in ASL. That makes sense because I speak English and that is the only language that I speak. And to this day, I fumble over my words all the time, as you've probably heard a thousand times in just this alone. Penguins fly underwater. Okay, so they don't swim. <laughs> That's really weird. Oh, my God. So, rather, they swim so well underwater that it seems they are flying. Penguins can swim up to speeds of 25 miles per hour. That is pretty interesting. If And I have seen the footage of them uh, underwater, and it does pretty much look like they are flying because it doesn't look like they do a lot of flapping with the fins. So, that would be accurate that it does look like flying. <laughs> Minnie, Mouse, uh, Minnie Mouse's first name is not Minnie. It's Minnie. Ew. I apologize. It's Minerva. 
Minnie Mouse is a nickname that was given to the character by UB or Oob he works and Walt Disney. I apologize if I did not say that right. Minnie's actual name is rarely used, so Minerva. Oh, okay. You know what? I really like that. I think I'm going to name my next uh, stuffed animal Minerva. I think that's such a cute name. <laughs> and I've actually never heard it before. That's really nice. Uh, Rudolph the Reindeer. Rudolph the Red Nor. Psh, Rudolph the reindeer, <laughs> I apologize, is a female. This can be observed through antlers. Female deer shed their antlers in the spring and grow them back into the full size by winter. The male reindeer stops its growth during the winter. So does that mean that the movie is not accurate from, I believe it's 1964? So, because he has his little, Rudolph has the girl in the movie. So is she supposed to be, is that, is her, is her ears the way that the males are supposed to be? I'm just curious because did they like or did they just keep them the same like i know it's just a movie so it's just like obviously but it, it'd be really interesting to see if they made her with the ears i'd just be curious all right a jiffy which is cute either way we love it and let's see because that's one of my favorite movies of all time uh jiffy is a proper unit of time it is exactly one one hundredth of a second i have heard this before actually this is slower than a plank which is a sextillion times faster so for those of you that did not know that that is pretty interesting so when people say i'll be back in a jiffy there's it's actually not accurate when they're saying that <laughs> it seems like it'd be a little too long that they'd be gone no matter what they're doing but who knows uh tira tira misu translates to take me to heaven in italian i'm sorry if i did not say that right like i said i only speak uh one language so it's very hard for me to pronounce outside of my own but I do uh, hope I did not hurt the way that sounds because I have terrible pronunciation even with English words sometimes. This implies that the dish is, is so good that it would take you to heaven. This Italian dessert is well-loved all over the world and has several alternative twists that you can create. So it's a dessert. Oh, does anyone know what it tastes like? Is it good? I bet it is because Italian is probably, I think, my favorite food because I love pasta and like bread. I'm like the worst about that. And I definitely say... I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> Buttermilk does not contain any butter. Well, that's disappointing, and the butter in its name refers to the origins of the drink. Now, that's a confusing random fact you probably didn't know. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> and it's disappointing, to be honest, because it's lying, but it's fine. All right, brunch was invented as a way of curing hangovers. This meal would be enjoyed as a late breakfast that leans more towards fatty foods this came from the belief that alcohol causes cravings for greasy foods to increase now it's funny because when i'm hungover personally i don't like to eat but i do know some people do um so that makes sense for them me personally i do not feel um <clears throat> i do not feel good when i eat then but that, that makes sense uh Hil hitler's nephew uh betrayed him well, Hit William Hitler attempted to blackmail his uncle with threats regarding his paternal grandfather, uh, was a Jewish merchant. After this failed, he fled Germany and wrote an article for Look magazine titled Why I Hate My Uncle. It was after that William joined the U.S. Navy. Well, you know, I think that anyone turning on him uh, is a good thing. And good for you, sir. <laughs> All right, the conti continental plates move at the same rate that fingernails grow. Research suggests that in some time in the far future, a supercontinent may form. The continents are continuously moving a few uh, centimeters a year. So let's see. Let me read that again a little bit in my mind. Okay, so because of the, oh, okay, so because we're moving, there might be some space of land that forms in all of that, I'm assuming, and uh, we might get another continent. That's pretty interesting. They do have a photo of it, actually, which is pretty wild. Uh, it looks it looks like a river and it, uh, like a split land that almost looks man-made but i don't it, i don't it's not i'm not implying that it just looks incredible <laughs> that's crazy uh sailors working for the royal navy uh need special permission to grow their beards once this is approved they are given two weeks to grow a full set before presenting himself to a master at arms this person then decides that the beard looks presentable enough to keep hmm you know, I, these are so interesting to me. I've never heard, uh, like, usually when I read random facts, that's why I kind of picked this one when I, like, skimmed through it. I was like, 
Because usually when I pick, like, see random facts, they're just stuff, like, about, like, the human body or, like, things about Earth. I find this really interesting because you're getting, like, a mix of, like, everything along with, like, random little social things. It's pretty fun. I really, really like this list. Uh, there are fewer stars than there are trees on Earth. I think I have heard this before. Uh, according to st- statistics, there are around 3 trillion trees on the planet and only about 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. So, that is incredible. That is really incredible. Because you feel like when you, like, if you do, if you, well, I live in California, but if you ever go somewhere where you can see the stars, it just seems like it would be so much more than that. That is really, really, really crazy. Mary and James are the most popular names in the world. You know, that is, no, that is actually surprising to me because I, I work food and I have to ask for people's names. I've been doing it for about five, six years now. And I feel like I've heard every name that's like common and I would not expect either one of those because to be honest, I don't really get a lot of uh, Marys like you would think I do. I think I feel like I get James more though. I do get James more often. <clears throat> um, my, when, I don't know what I even call the most popular though. Like I don't know what name I hear the most. I definitely hear common names a lot like that. Like those names, yeah. But I don't know as far as anything else. That's pretty interesting. I just feel like I hear other names more than that, but that's that's interesting. Children are born less or frequently on Saturdays. Among all days in the week, most children in the world are born on Thursday. Babies born on weekends in December is also the least common. Well, so if you have a, a birthday weekend in December where you were born on that, you have a least common birthday too, so that's pretty cool. I think I actually know someone from years ago that might have had that birthday. I think it was... Well, I don't know. I'd have to see what day they were born, but I know it was uh, definitely in December. Danish mothers are known to be the most hardworking moms in the world. Uh, according to statistics, 82% of mothers in Denmark are employed. Meanwhile, neighboring countries like Sweden and the ne- Netherlands only rate at 50% working mothers. So I think that's really good, though, um, either way. Uh, 75 burgers are sold in McDonald's every second. You can view how many burgers have been sold in real time on the McDonald's website. You can also track the number of other products that have been sold from all over the world. That's crazy because I know some are franchise and owned. So, it, it, like, that's... Wow. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So, like, are they all hooked up to the system? Like, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't really know why it matters how many are being sold. Like, I don't know why people are curious about that. Like, in real time. But <laughs> to each their own. It seems fun to learn, I guess. Uh, if you're bored, <laughs> 1,700 uh, people become millionaires every day in the U.S. The United States has over 8 million um, families who have a yearly income of $100 million. Or, sorry, $100 million. Now I'm making up numbers. $1 million. I apologize. You can't hum while you're holding your nose. I bet you just tried it, didn't you? Well, because I'm reading these two people out loud. No. And I'm not going to, because I don't even want to know what that's going to sound like. (laughs) But I give, I tell everyone that's watching right now to just give that a try. So if you're wondering what it says again, you can't hum while holding your nose. So give that a try. (laughs) I might try it when I get off of here, though, just for fun. (laughs) You are more likely to have a weird or scary dream when you are sleeping on your stomach. This is because sleeping, uh, diff- uh, different sleeping positions have different pressure on your body. Sleeping on your stomach restricts other movements compared to sleeping on your side or your back. And research believes that this may be why the intensity of your dreams dif- differentiate, dif- <laughs> depending on your sleeping position. I think you guys know what I was trying to say. I just can't even pronounce that word in general. Differentiate, or, you know, it's that word, you know. <laughs> So researchers believe that this be uh, this will be why your dreams are intense because of your sleeping position. So that's interesting. Um, if you're trying to have intense dreams, then there you go. Because I know some people, especially I like to do this as well, uh, they like to kind of like, if they're, especially if you're dreaming about something in particular, like during a period of time, you could definitely do that and like see if you remember your, like if you're, if you keep dreaming about something, like I know for me, I, dream, I have like themes like where like one week I'm like having really, like really like outlandish like it wild dreams and then i'll be like oh i kind of want to like see what's going on in those dreams but i can't, can't keep remembering them because they're not quite intense enough you could do that I, I would assume that would help 
Um, your eyeballs do not grow or change the size as you age. I think a lot of people know this one, but I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Uh, generally, only the vertical measure changes, but only by a small amount. So by the time we reach 20 to 21 years old, our eyes will be at their permanent state. So your eyes stop growing at around that age, um, which is pretty incredible. Um, the fact that they would keep growing... Um, And then, like, stop at some point. Yeah, that your eyeballs don't grow or change the size of your age. Okay, so they, even when you're born, they're, they're big? That's pretty... Yeah, okay, I think I've heard that, too. So they do grow, but, like, only a little bit? Generally, the only vertical measure changes, but only by a small amount. Okay, so it does a little bit in, a, in the vertical way, and then by the time we reach 20, 21... Okay, perfect, yeah. So they do, but it's not the way you would think they do. And it's very little. Blue-eyed people have higher alcohol tolerance. Well, as a blue-eyed person, I could probably attest that that would be true. <laughs> Research in 2000 found that those with lighter eye colors are less likely to uh, abuse alcohol, thus lesser consumption, developing a, a higher tolerance. So I guess you don't have to drink as much. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's interesting. All right, pubic hairs. Oh, pubic hairs live. Uh, pubic hair. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Pubic hair lives, 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 for about three weeks long. Pubic hair lives for about three weeks long. Pubic hair lives. For, oh my god. Okay. Pubic hair also indicates if the bo human body is ready for reproduction. It also projects the genital areas during reproduction. Um, okay, so for this one, that is interesting. So does it fall off and then like regrow? So, like, <laughs> like, it's, uh, you're, like, that's, I have a lot of questions. Uh, male bees can only mate once. Uh, after mating with a female, the male bee's endophallus is removed. Its abdomen also rips open and results in male bee's death. Now, that's what we call a bad date. Smelling green apples will help with weight loss. <laughs> Research stated that the smell can help curb your hunger. The neutral sweet scent that comes from green apples and bananas is enough to temporarily forget about hunger. Now, that's very good. I feel like that also goes along with the 10 second uh, craving rule thing where you're like, oh, I feel like I want something and you like count to 10 and then you think about something else. For me personally, it works sometimes only. <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, no, I want it. I am a very determined person and when I want something, I want it and it's hard to get off my head. But like, I feel like if you, <laughs> with anything, even food. But I feel like if you are someone who can forget things easily, like, after you thought about it, which I could do too, but not when it comes to something I'm, like, focused on. But if that's you, then that's a good one. The green apples, possibly, or the counting of ten. Um, a snail has 2,500 teeth. Uh, these teeth can be found on their tongue that's covered in ridges. Snails eat by rubbing their tongue on its food while ridges cut into tiny pieces. Um, so I'm only going to read about three more, and then I'm going to take a break here, and if you guys have, um, want to me to do more, I will definitely continue reading, and, um, I will keep the website right here, okay? <laughs> uh, you could die from staying up for two weeks straight. Go to sleep, people. Oh my goodness. Sleep deprivation can cause your mental and motor responses to become unstable, uh, thus causing a higher risk to your safety. So I guess you could, I, yeah, I guess I would go along with the idea that you can hallucinate and have, uh, like you know a lot of crazy mind things happen if you don't sleep so make sure you are sleeping it's very good for your brain and it's vitally important especially hearing that you know if you have a lot of stress like me i don't really sleep well when that's happening to me so just make sure that you find ways to sleep because it's very important and i know that nobody's probably staying up for two weeks straight that's listening to this but if any reason you are finding you're not sleeping for more than a few days you can also try to um if you even if you just lay and you're trying to like you lay like in a state that is if you were sleeping so like in the most relaxed state try to like lay like that because i know that it's not going to heal your body like the way as if you were sleeping but at least you're giving your heart and stuff like a lot of um chance to like not be it as fast as if you're doing activity because if you're just staying up no matter what you're doing it's using a lot of activity so if you can just rest your organs that way just a little bit it'll, it'll do your body a little bit of service too like if you really cannot sleep it just at least try, I, I, they call it, like, I think it's like called like when you, like the possum sleeping or something, like try to do something like that, but yeah, um, okay, so pigeons cannot fart, <laughs> 
Farts are caused by a noticeable number of eruptions from intestinal gas. However, for a bird, their intestine is short, which causes them to get rid of waste more frequently. So they don't need to. <laughs> so it's actually not as weird as it sounds, but it's pretty funny. But basically, they don't need to because nothing's being held in their body very long. So, yeah. Uh, space partly smells like diesel fuel and barbecue. <laughs> this is mainly due to the amount of dying stars in our galaxy. The combustion releases a compound called polycyclic, polycyclic aromo, aromatic, sorry, uh, hydrocarbons. So polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. I only repeat when I can't pronounce the word right, just so you guys can kind of figure out what I'm trying to say. I can also spell things if it's that bad, okay? Um, and then I'm going to read one more, but that's really interesting about the space. I never thought about what it would smell like ever. And then if you, th yeah, it just makes complete sense. It sounds weird. And then when they put it into context for you, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, one strand of hair can hold up to three ounces of weight. The average person's head contains about 100,000 strands of hair. If you do the math, your hair can support up to 12 tons worth of weight. I, I've always thought that was so interesting about hair because when you, like, when you have one piece of hair, it just breaks, you know, I, and then, like, you, you grab your hair, if you have really long hair, you feel it, it does it strengthen numbers with that one. And I think that could be, a, like, you can use hair for a lot of philosophical things, I think, in that way, which is really nice. <laughs> but, yeah, anyways, I'm going to conclude it here. If you guys want to hear more, I definitely will give you more. Um, I did have fun doing this. Uh, it is my first time ever doing this on, uh, like, a podcast setting. I don't even know if you'd call this a podcast right now. I'm just kind of getting the feeling for talking. I definitely will talk about way more deeper subjects, deeper everything that you guys want to talk about. It could be anything, like, anything. Like, I really don't mind. Well, this is the Barbie talk. We talk about everything in this house, you know. Well, think about what Barbie would want to talk about, but then think about if Barbie was a city girl living in real life, you know. That's where we're at. Um, and so, yeah, I just, like, really, uh, would like here, here, to hear feedback if you guys want more. If you're interested in anything that we read here and you want more research on something, we definitely can go down that rabbit hole, too. So, have a nice day. My name is Chelsea, and, um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.